great effort uh, from Wyoming, especially down the stretch of the game. I thought they did a great job putting pressures on, pressure on us with a transition offense and making plays. One of the teams that, you know, tough to defend when they have five perimeter guys that can make shots or two big guys that can make plays off the dribble. Uh, they did a great job in the transition. I thought we did a poor job for about a three or four minute stretch with our transition defense of getting back. I think we were celebrating baskets uh, and they were making plays. And, and then we made it obviously a ball game. But we did enough down the stretch to win to keep the game, maintain and win the game. Well, I guess you, you never know with freshmen. You know he's a talented ball player. You, you saw him play on the high school circuit. You, you saw the things he was doing as a high school player. But you, you never know the transition. Not that he lacked the talent, but just going through it. Uh, it's a different level. And uh, but but never lack. He, he's never lacked confidence. And you know, again, in Charlie Charlie Moore was five ten, but he he doesn't realize he's five ten. The guy he's going against maybe six five. And it's just it's always a basketball player. He makes plays. He makes decisions. For his age, he's he's one of the better guys I've seen as far as attacking ball screens, reading ball screens. He's so shifty. It's really hard to trap him. And he has a, a variety of moves in and around the rim with his floaters, uh, pull ups, step backs. Just a tough guy to defend, I mean, especially the way the game's officiated. It's really hard to defend him. If he's on his game, it's tough to defend. Yeah, and I, and I think part of that, you know, celebrating. Uh, well, I want to be a good team. I just love, I just love defense, the mentality of defending and playing hard and rebounding. Uh, but you have to execute down the stretch. I, I think we got excited, and got a big lead. And we didn't defend it at the level we needed to, and we didn't maintain it at the level we needed to. And I think with, with some lineup change with guys going out, um, and then with, with, with five, uh, we had five perimeter, four perimeter guys and Ivan. Uh, Ivan's winded, but we needed him to go because we just felt like we were better with him at the five and switching those options. And it took a little bit away from us offensively and sometimes defensively because Cam, Cam King, even King had five blocks. But we just felt like that was a better lineup. And again, it was, it was something new, too, to have King. I mean, excuse me, Sam, Charlie, and Grant on the floor at the same time as well. So now you're probably not as strong defensive. But I, but I thought Charlie did an admirable job defending in the post and battling as well. What's the uh, prognosis on Jabari Bird? Uh, I, would, I, would, I would say at least two weeks. But, I, again, after that, I couldn't really tell you uh, a timetable. Uh, just spasms, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't guarantee it. I'm not a doctor or a trainer, but I, I, I don't see him in the next couple of days or week. But I wouldn't guarantee it. How does Ivan look to you in his first game? Not bad. Uh, obviously, got his conditioning there because uh, um, the plan is to give him the ball, go inside to him to make plays at the elbow on the perimeter, shooting jump shots. Uh, but he's a talented player, but when, when you miss that kind of time, and then in a game, especially a game like this where you don't, you're not guarding traditional big where you can sit around the rim and they're moving on the perimeter, now you're switching on the guard, uh, which is good for him because, I mean, you have to go through it. He has to get his conditioning up. And that's part of it. But I, but I thought he was good. Obviously, he's not the level we expect him to be at because of the conditioning, but he's a very talented player, and he makes adjustments. Besides the two games, how much time did you miss with the television? Plenty of time. Two, three weeks of practice? Yes. He missed plenty of time. No, no. Again, because I think uh, part of that you have to uh, attribute that to being out. You know, getting the reps under his belt as far as being a part of a practice, going up and down the bang and the physical nature. They sending a double team at him. I think I think it's uh, it's normal. Now it's not. A, we don't expect that from him. If he's 100 percent, he's healthy, he's in condition. But he has to go through it. Yeah. What does it say about his talent level that here he is looking for Rossi for two games and he's still averaging double double? He's a talented player. That's why he's one of the best guys in the, in the college game. Uh, but, but I think more so for him, his IQ of the game, he's able to get over the hump. Uh, uh, and then the reputation, it doesn't help him with his reputation, so how teams defend him. So now the double team, now they're putting pressure on him when he's on the defensive side of the ball to make him work. Uh, but but he, he's ready for it. He can handle it. As far as Cam Rex is concerned, we already said, I already said they were icing his leg, but only 50 minutes. They said so he's icing his knee. Uh, Said it felt sore, but I, I I don't know. I don't have an update right now. No. Coach Rogers scored 28 all of last year. He's <coughs> 32 in four games. What is? How has he been more effective offensively? Rogers one of the hardest workers uh, I think I've been around. You know, as a, as, as a coach, he works extremely hard on his game. When Rogers shoots a three-point shot, I feel just as good. When he shoots a 
set three-point shot. When his feet are set, as, as well as anybody on the team, uh, he reels he reels them off in practice. Uh, he shoots them consistently. He works on his game. Excuse me. The biggest thing for Roger, where I thought he's improved this year, defending without fouling, and then making his free throws, and then the other part, and he struggled with it. The exhibition, exhibition game in the scrimmage where he, he drives to the lane and he looks for a foul and he's off balance. Now he's jump stopping in the lane, gathering himself, and he's going up strong. And I think that once he made that adjustment, it really helps because he's an explosive guy. He has a quick first step and, he, and he's making his free throws. It really helps. I just think one of the. Obviously, he got got to shoot the ball. You make shots. I think for him, he's been ready, shot ready, catch and shoot. He has to continue to improve his ability to go off the bounce and make plays. I mean, like 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 anybody that shoots the ball, an elite shooter, when they go off the bounce, the percentages go down. So I think that's where he has to continue to improve, making plays off the dribble, being under control, and gather himself because he, I mean, he's a big kid. He's six seven, two hundred twenty pounds. So when you get around around the rim, just be strong and make strong moves. Well, one of the things we try to do, he's, he's a really good three-point shooter, and he's a right-hand driver, and he's a good free-throw shooter. What we try to do as a team, we take pride in defending the three-point line, and, and that's where a lot of trust comes in with Cam King and now Ivan so much. So get those guys off the line that shoots three-point shots, and then put it on the floor. We trust our one-on-one -on -one defense, then more importantly, corral those guys into Cameron and Kingsley. Uh, and for, for him, scouting report, right-hand driver, he wants to get fouled, so just be strong. When he gets around the rim, be big, allow your big guys to come block the shot. And you got to contest his threes with high hands. Uh, and, and I think our guys did a good job with that.